Prairie, a French word meaning extensive meadow. Before the Illinois tall grass prairie was swept away by wheat, it was a breathtakingly beautiful, balanced, and self-sustaining community. Part of a large tract of native plants covering America's Midwest, the 40,000 square miles of Illinois prairie formed a dynamic ecosystem that included soil, water, and insects. A rich mix of grasses, sedges, and those plants we recognize as colorful wildflowers are forbs. I began my career as a biochemist, but I was taken out to see a prairie for the first time. I had never seen plants like that before. And from that Bob time Betts on, fell in I love with the prairie. On the prairie. To the new I settlers, though, this vast, largely treeless landscape was daunting. Some even feared the land might not be fertile, but the soil was rich and deep. For thousands of years, with the help of special bacteria and fungi, more than 250 species of deep-rooted grassy plants and flowers built up and maintained a sponge-like, mineral-rich soil that resisted erosion and prevented water loss. When you have a handful of prairie soil, especially virgin prairie soil, it has a certain amount of granular structure to it, and it's spongy. And so the thing is, the soil is something like, a, like popcorn, the difference between popcorn seeds and the popcorn. The abundant plant life during the growing season provided shelter and sustenance to a network of interdependent insects, birds, and animals. Now here's an interesting thing. You know, in the prairie, the, all these plants, these 200 plants or so that are found in the prairie, they have different lengths of the roots. In some cases, the roots like this prairie dock here will, have, will go down, it will go down to, to 15 feet or more. And at the opposite end, you have the violets and the shooting stars that only have only very shallow roots. And in between, of course, a lot of the plants were in between. And what we're trying to do at Fermi is to try to rebuild on a larger scale this same sort of plant community. Today, beautiful stretches of rebuilt prairie, oak savannas, and revitalized marshes flourish at the Department of Energy's Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, home to the Tevatron Collider. Nurturing prairie grasses and flowers may seem irrelevant to the lab's scientific mission to explore nature on its smaller scale, to understand the most basic building blocks of matter and the forces that bind them together. But the scientific mission is carried out in a human context, in a particular place with a rich history. We have a history here with the prairie. We've been bringing students out to the prairie for 10 years to enjoy this restored prairie. They take data, re enter it into the website, and then they return to their classroom to analyze it and see how the prairie has changed since we've been entering data for the last 10 years. We are so grateful to Robert Wilson and the founding fathers of this place who had the foresight to put in prairie so the students of today could have this study area. Part of the concept of the founding director, Robert Wilson, was that the Fermi Lab community would take responsibility for keeping that place healthy. He saw restoring the prairie as one aspect of Fermilab's stewardship of the land. Betts came to work with Wilson at the Fermilab site almost by accident, after attending a Kansas Prairie Restoration Conference in the early 1970s. There, Betts shared knowledge of the site with colleagues who encouraged him to contact the lab himself. When he learned that Fermilab's director had requested landscaping advice from the Morton Arboretum in Lyle, Illinois, he was encouraged and the seeds of the Fermilab prairie were sown. So the, I, I came back uh, from the conference and I, I, I got on the phone and I called the lab and I wanted to talk to Dr. Wilson. I felt I was gonna go right to the top. Why well, start at the bottom and work up, go right to the top. So I, I called Dr. Wilson, I didn't get him, but I got his, his assistant and uh, he, uh, he told me uh, I'll talk to Dr. Wilson. So the, the, Short time later, he called me again. He said, Dr. Wilson is interested in your project. So the next day, I came to the Fermi lab and uh, visited him in his office and talked to him about the project. And he said, I think we might be able to start a project like this. He said, probably in the accelerator ring. And so uh, he said, uh, Dr. Betts, he said, how long do you think this project is, would take to build that prairie that you're thinking about? 
this large prairie. I said, well, I said, I don't know. It's never been done before because we're starting from the scratch. We're starting with agricultural soils and been plowed and cultivated for 150 years, I said. And what do we, I said, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40, 50, you know, I finally, I, I didn't say any more because it was going out of this world, you know. I said, it might even take 100 years or more, I said, I don't know. And he said, well, if that's the case, I said, we think we should start this afternoon. As the project developed, Wilson established the first Prairie Committee to oversee the work. The Fermilab Prairie is one result of Wilson's vision of the laboratory as a cultural, recreational, and educational center for the surrounding community, as well as an international research center. For some, however, a prairie made no sense. Uh, you have to understand that we were either agriculture, I had backgrounds in agriculture or construction or a little ornamental horticulture. And to a person, we all thought, what does this nut want to do with this perfectly good Illinois corn ground. And we thought, uh, here there's going to be this professor in a white lab coat is going to come out here and he's going to spout Latin to us all the time and intimidate us with uh, all of his ideas. And of course, once we met Dr. Betts and found out how uh, nice a fellow he was and, and uh, learned what a, the value of a large prairie restoration was, it uh, turned all of us around. In anticipation of the first sowing, interested Fermilab employees, local teachers, students, and community volunteers collected more than 400 pounds of seeds from the Morton Arboretum Schulenberg Prairie Garden and other fledgling restoration sites in the Chicago area. Big blue stem, Indian grass, wild quinine, purple cone flowers, rattlesnake master. Prairie volunteers soon became acquainted with these old-fashioned plants fostering the burgeoning awareness of our Chicago wilderness heritage. The seeds were cleaned and prepared for winter storage in what would become Fermi Lab's first official seed barn. The initial attempt involved planting seedlings and sowing seed by hand. The new prairie enthusiasts soon learned, however, that large-scale restoration would require a mechanized process. The same equipment that destroyed the prairie is going to be used to rebuild it. The first plants we saw in the spring of the first year after the planting was Canada thistle, uh, really the, the types of weeds that are considered very noxious, and we looked at it as we thought it was a failure. Betts kept telling us they're down there. Amongst all those weeds, there's those little soldiers in there, and uh, it, it just took a few years for us to see some of these plants when they started to seed out, actually, and uh, get up above the weedier species that we found out that it, uh, it was going to be successful. Dr. Betts' faith in the prairie plants and the tenacious efforts and enthusiasm of the grounds crew and volunteers moved the project forward. The participants learned what worked best as they went along. The dynamic prairie ecosystem that sustained itself for thousands of years would take many decades to regenerate and had to be guided by the natural cycle of plant secession. If you start out with a, with a vacant piece of land, and if you were to take all the prairie plants, the species that would belong in that particular kind of prairie, say maybe 150 to 200 or more, if you were to put them in all at once, most of them wouldn't come up. They would not be able to grow under the heavy competition. New plots were jump-started with what Betts termed the prairie matrix, the seeds of late flowering grasses and the hardiest and most tenacious of the prairie forbs. Within two years, we had enough dry vegetation to burn. And when you burn, then the prairie grasses come down hard on those weeds and start throwing them out. I said, if you listen very carefully, you'll hear the screams and cries of the dying as the prairie plants are throwing them out of the tract. After a prairie's first burn, a second wave of prairie forbs and grasses is sown. These less aggressive species fare better after the weedy vegetation has been eliminated. As the Fermi Lab Prairie improved, rarer species were introduced to produce a community more representative of the pre-settlement prairie. Overseeding ensures that species needing a boost will come up in the future. The practice of burning was introduced as part of the prairie maintenance program. Before settlement, prairie fires created a natural fertilizer and destroyed invasive weeds. This natural prescription for a healthy prairie continues to be a maintenance tool at Fermilab. 
Fires are carefully set and controlled in late fall or early spring. This process has the full endorsement of the Department of Energy and the laboratory. No burn is conducted unless just the right combination of moisture, weather, and wind exists. The highest priority in a burn is complete safety for the surrounding neighborhoods, as well as lab buildings and staff. The prairie you see behind me was burned about a month ago. You can see how fast it's greened up. Uh, these plants respond quickly to fire. You can see how healthy they've become in a month's time. But burning is not the only management activity that we do at Fermilab. It only starts the whole cycle of the year of uh, management duties that we have uh, designed to enrich the prairie and increase the biodiversity. Uh, after this spring burn season, we sow seeds directly into these burned areas in specific locations where we know they're needed. These seeds come from the previous year's harvests. After that spring planting season, we move into the summer season and the growing season where frequent surveys are done to better understand the health of our prairies, to know where specific seeds are needed for the next year. And also during the summer and into the fall as plants mature and their seeds ripen, harvesting is done both by the Fermilab Roads and Grounds Department and by hundreds of volunteers from the local community who are big help to us in this spread of our biodiversity. They have become very important to this whole project. After the fall harvest, our prairie seeds are taken by staff, they're dried over the course of the winter, they're cleaned and processed and prepared for the next spring's plantings. This leads us back into the major part of the burn season, which is the spring. So it's a continuous year-long activity, changes from season to season, and the, the volunteers have become really an active part of this. The perennial prairie plants emerge and flower at different times in succession from spring to late summer. Seed collection begins after the first ephemerals, such as wood betony and shooting stars, bloom in early spring. Other seeds are harvested throughout the summer as the plants bloom and then become dormant. However, the major harvest takes place in late October or early November, when the grounds crew, many Fermilab employees and local residents turn out for what has become a fall tradition. Well, I've been coming out since 1977, and when I see the families bring their children out here, I think it's just great because they get a sense of what was here to start with. It goes back for, as I say, this goes, prairie goes back for thousands of years. But the kids are, kids are interested in seeing something that's really a, a real value, you know, of, the, of, may, of preserving this type of the, of the prairie. There's a lot of people that we see coming out here each, each and every year and they feel they're a part of it now. It's, uh, they see the changes going on. They feel that they're, you know, that they're uh, doing something that's very valuable and it's rewarding to them. During the blooming season, Betts and the crew keep detailed records of new plants and note areas that need to be overseeded and enhanced the following year. Prairie monitoring goes on all year long and has become a favorite activity of the grounds crew here at Fermilab. After the fall harvests, the seeds are placed in a barn for cold storage during the winter months. During this time, agricultural seed processing machinery is used to clean and separate the seeds from the chaff and stems. Certain seeds require special handling to improve germination rates. They might need to be stored at a particular level of humidity or to be held at a low temperature for a period of time. Fermilab now produces thousands of pounds of its own seeds for preparation and storage with enough to share with schools and the community. There is no rule book for how to build or reconstruct or even enrich a prairie. A lot of people are now doing this. A lot of people communicate their successes and their failures. We all are kind of pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps, sharing what has worked and what hasn't worked. Uh, Fermilab has had a nice marriage of ecological vision and agricultural uh, equipment and ideas and it's blended together very well to produce something that seems to be working very well for us. I really feel sad that our forefathers never thought enough you know about the future that they could have saved little tracks all around you know and they didn't do it and I and I, I felt sorry when I started working with prairies I felt very badly there was very little little interest in prairies 
And I always used to tell my friend Ray Schulenberg, I said, I said, the prairie's gonna, gonna be disappear and it'll be without a whimper. No one will care. Prairies are beautiful. They improve the environment, rebuild soil, and encourage long absent birds, butterflies, bees, and other diverse wildlife to return. In addition, returning large tracts of land to pre-settlement condition is economically beneficial as a practical, cost-effective, responsible way to manage the land. Once established, prairies are self-sustaining, do not require mowing, and naturally keep out noxious weeds. Their natural diversity keeps the system healthy and prevents soil erosion. The quality and quantity of water in underlying aquifers is enhanced. Labor is reduced. Noise and air pollution from gas-powered mowers is eliminated. Overall expenses are reduced since fewer herbicides and fertilizers are used. Communities come together to participate in and enjoy the results of this recreation. It's a project that has become integral to Fermilab's objective of ecologically responsible land stewardship. I probably will never see the Fermi Prairie in all its glory, but I hope that other future generations will. And I say with that alone, it makes me feel good to know that, that I've done something worthwhile. I think it's really important that students have an opportunity to be able to experience the wonders of this ecosystem. It's very rare when you stop to think about there's only four uh, acres of uh, prairie left in the state of Illinois that's a natural prairie. It's uh, um, really amazing. The students that have been through here had the opportunity to experience that at a very vulnerable, very crucial age in their life. And everybody uh, recognizes the enthusiasm of a middle level student. They think they can solve all of the world's problems and they carry that enthusiasm with them as they go out into the world. I have to believe that some of these young people now, uh, as young adults and starting their own families, may just be bringing their children and uh, their strollers out here to the Fermilab Prairie to be able to experience it at yet even a younger age. The Prairie Restoration Project and physics research at Fermilab, in some sense, are worlds apart. The Prairie Restoration Project operates on a much more familiar human scale, dependent on conventional farm machinery and hard physical labor and moving at the pace of the seasons. The four elements of the ancient Greeks, earth, air, fire, and water, interact with plants and insects, birds and animals to produce a beautiful and diverse environment. In fact, though, the prairie and the physics lab have much in common. Efforts on both fronts require creativity, precision, and luck. There are no formulas for discovering fundamental particles or for restoring a prairie. A successful scientific experiment raises as many questions as it answers. Similarly, each new successional stage in a prairie restoration project brings new challenges. Those involved in both enterprises have their eyes on the future increasing the common store of knowledge about matter and restoring the prairie both teach us about how nature works and how we fit into it. Restoring the prairie is a deeply satisfying activity because it brings us into close contact with nature. It reminds us that our understanding of nature is from within. Henry Thoreau wrote, we are a part and parcel of nature. <laughs>